Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through vestibular neuronitis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash vestibular neuronitis or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Vestibular neuronitis describes inflammation of the vestibular nerve. This is usually attributed to a viral infection. Let's start by talking about the pathophysiology. The inner ear contains the bony labyrinth, which is a complex bony structure that contains fluids called perilymph and endolymph. The inner ear is comprised of three parts, the semicircular canals, the vestibule, which is the middle section of the labyrinth, and the cochlea. The parts of the inner ear that are responsible for detecting movement of the head are the semicircular canals and the otolith organs. The otolith organs are the utricle and the saccule which are found within the vestibule or the middle section of the inner ear. The semicircular canals detect rotation of the head and the otolith organs detect gravity and linear acceleration, so acceleration in a single direction. The cochlea is responsible for hearing. The vestibular nerve transmits signals from the vestibular system, which is the semicircular canals and the vestibule, to the brain to help with balance. The cochlear nerve transmits signals from the cochlea to provide hearing. Together they form the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is the eighth cranial nerve. Vestibular neuronitis refers to inflammation of the vestibular nerve. A viral infection may trigger this inflammation. This distorts the signals travelling from the vestibular system to the brain and confuses the signal that's required to sense movements of the head. This results in episodes of vertigo, where the brain thinks that the head is moving when the head's not actually moving. Let's talk about the presentation. Typically, the history involves the acute onset of vertigo. Vertigo is a descriptive term for a sensation that there's movement between the patient and their environment. Often this is a horizontal spinning sensation similar to how you feel after spinning in a circle and then stopping abruptly. In addition to vertigo, there may be a history of a recent viral upper respiratory tract infection that may have triggered the inflammation of the vestibular nerve. Symptoms are most severe for the first few days. Initially, vertigo may be constant, after which it's triggered or worsened by head movement. It's often associated with nausea and vomiting, which may be severe, and balance problems. It's essential to differentiate in a patient presenting with vertigo between peripheral causes, meaning causes in the inner ear, and central causes, meaning causes in the brain. Any neurological signs or symptoms should make you consider a central cause of the vertigo rather than vestibular neuronitis. And this may require urgent management, particularly if a posterior circulation infarction, a type of stroke, is suspected. A tom tip for you, tinnitus and hearing loss are not features of vestibular neuronitis, as the cochlea and the cochlear nerve are not affected. If tinnitus and hearing loss are also present, consider labyrinthitis or Meniere's disease as a differential diagnosis. One easy way to remember the difference between labyrinthitis and neuronitis is that labyrinthitis starts with an L for loss of hearing and neuronitis starts with an N for no loss of hearing. Let's talk about the head impulse test. The head impulse test can be used to diagnose peripheral causes of vertigo, resulting from problems with the vestibular system. For example, vestibular neuronitis or labyrinthitis. 
The head impulse test involves the examiner and the patient sitting upright facing each other and the patient fixing their gaze on the examiner's nose. Then the examiner holds the patient's head and rapidly jerks it 10 to 20 degrees in one direction while the patient continues looking at the examiner's nose. The head is slowly moved back to the centre before repeating the jerk in the opposite direction, again 10 to 20 degrees. It's important to ensure the patient has no neck pain or pathology in the neck before performing the test. A patient with a normally functioning vestibular system will keep their eyes fixed on the examiner's nose. In a patient with an abnormally functioning vestibular system, for example with vestibular neuronitis or labyrinthitis, the eyes will saccade, meaning they rapidly move side to side as they eventually fix back on the examiner's nose. The head impulse test helps diagnose a peripheral cause of vertigo. It will be normal if the patient has no current symptoms or a central cause of vertigo. Let's talk about management. The management here is adapted from the NICE clinical knowledge summaries updated in 2017. Always check the local and national guidelines when you're treating patients. Patients may need admission if they're becoming dehydrated due to severe nausea and vomiting. For peripheral vertigo, short-term options for managing symptoms include prochlorperazine or antihistamines, for example cyclozine, cinarazine or promethazine. NICE advised that symptomatic treatment can be used for up to three days. Extended use may slow the recovery. NICE also recommend a referral if the symptoms do not improve after one week or if they do not completely resolve after six weeks as they may need further investigations or vestibular rehabilitation therapy or VRT. Finally, let's talk about the prognosis. Symptoms are most severe for the first few days, after which they gradually resolve over the following two to six weeks. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV, may develop after vestibular neuronitis. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.